Welcome, everybody, to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. I'm Pete Wright, and I am with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, Pete Wright. How are you, Hello. Nikki Kinzer? I'm doing well. Yeah? It's fall day. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I look at, I have, we've talked, I'm sure we've talked about Dark Sky before, the app. Do you yeah. have it, Dark Sky? No. no, I thought you meant like the real sky. No, like, well, because it always is. <laughs> yeah. No, it's this app on the, uh, it's this iPhone. It's it's my weather app of choice. And oh. you can get, you can find it on the web at forecast.io. And when you look at it, like you can swipe through and see kind of what it's really great. It tells you what is the weather going to be like in the next hour. Right. Like it's so but it's sp- called dark sky. It's called dark sky. It's a kind of an ominous title. It's kind of a negative title, Pete, right? It is. <laughs> it is. It's a gloomy title. Why don't they call it blue sky? I don't, because then why would you ever need to look at it? Right. Cause that's what, that's no. the whole point, right? It's telling you when it's going to be a dark sky and it does, it sends you these notifications. It'll say like in three minutes, it's going to start raining heavily for 10 minutes and then it will stop. Right. And it's so useful. Like when we go to our, we do our annual New York trip, you know, because the weather can be really weird. You know, it's just, it just starts monsoon rains out of nowhere. And now you know, 10 minutes before. And you know, and I'm telling you it, it, it is people know people are carrying it around and you you see people all at once look at their phones and then start running <laughs> right in new york city it, yeah like it's well and this is in chautauqua you know it's a little bit easier oh, to pick yeah. people out because it's more like mayberry yeah um and so i uh, i look at dark sky but you can also kind of swipe through and it'll tell you it's got a little beautiful little bar graph and it tells you like okay it's gonna be when it's gray it's kind of overcast when it's blue when it's dark blue it's pouring rain and all week like starting tomorrow at six, it is dark blue until Thursday night at midnight. Yeah, that's sad. Uh, that's 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 where we live, folks. Uh, <laughs> we tis, live in the rain. Oh God, tis the season. <laughs> yes, it is. Season of seasonal depressive disorder. Okay, let's so let's, let's cheer this up, else. huh? Let's cheer <laughs> Although, this. Right I don't up. know if the subject is really all that scary, but that's <laughs> oh, all right. No, I'm, you know, yeah. All right, we'll do our best. Yeah, we'll be happy in spite of of difficult conversations. How about yes. that? Yes. Well, because this is really my own personal kind of therapy session. Here oh, okay. Today, so all right. Well, this is my I... own personal story. Okay. All right. Where would you like to begin? What are we talking about? Well, what we're going to talk about is I'm hoping it's not something that I'm dealing with by myself. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that maybe other people are dealing with this transition of school with their children, whether they're in going, like my son, basically what I'm going to talk about is my son going into middle school Mm -hmm. and this transition that we've been dealing with. And uh, so my, my intention for this is that I want to teach, or not teach, but I want to share with people um, our experience and what, what we've done so far to, to help my son, but also kind of what I've learned along the way. And then if anybody else has any, you know, any listeners that are like, oh, I know what she's talking about, or I've been there and here's a great idea, please share because... Um, I just feel like I need support in this area. And so I'm thinking that maybe other people do too. Yeah. You know, I I do know. And I, I, I certainly resemble that remark. Yes. Yes. So I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, so like I said, he is a sixth grader. He is new to middle school. Um, we had some concerns that he might have ADHD a couple years ago. So we had him tested and the doctor just didn't feel like he had enough, um, of the symptoms or what, however they, you know, they look at the variety of different tests and he was just like, I'm just not comfortable, um, giving him this diagnosis, which was fine. I mean, that's great. You don't want you know, to encourage to have your child have ADHD. Um, But I definitely knew and know now uh, there are some real heavy executive function challenges. So whether you call it ADHD or not, there are some things going on with my son that I can't deny, right? I mean, I just have to, um, and (laughs) for me being an ADHD coach, you know, that's a good thing, right? I know about this stuff. But you know, it's also a good thing. Well, okay, you'd finish telling your story and then I'll jump in. 
Well, just to give people kind of a reminder of what executive function um, channel or what the, what this is, what these challenges yeah. are, um, mainly they go into these four groups and it's planning, um, organization, working memory, and self-regulation. So um, if I look at my son, I'm thinking planning, it's really hard to break down projects. So if you have a quiz or a test down the road, it's very difficult for um, someone with executive function challenges to be able to break that down. And like, when do I study? How do I study? Um, time management management can become an issue, all of those things. Organization obviously is, is huge. Um, we talk about it all the time, Pete, we know, um, (laughs) working memory. I mean, we've talked about that before in past, past, uh, podcasts. And I think I brought up my son uh, about, you know, a couple of years ago, um, about forgetting backpacks and homework and things, things like that. I mean, they just, they don't intend to forget, but they just do. So my my son, for example, will have a homework assignment done in his binder, but he doesn't turn it in. It's like, hello, yeah, where are, where were you when they said turn in your homework? Um, but you know, he just didn't do do it. And then the self regulation is that impulse um, control, and um, you know, obviously that can be difficult for any child, but it can definitely be difficult for somebody who has ADHD or executive function issues. Right, right. So what were you going to say? Because I don't want to keep going if you were actually going to chime in and say something. Uh, you know, I was I was uh, teaching a class the other night and, and somebody made a comment about, you know, why experts in such and such a field are, you know, often have the worst whatever it is they're doing. And, and I find it a really interesting uh, insight. It's that, that aphorism, right? The cobbler's kids, all, uh, you know, wear no shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just how hard it is, I imagine. And, I, and if you want to reflect on this, you know, feel free. If not, we can move on. But it's just how hard it is to be an ADHD coach and to also be able to step back and be aware of what's going on in your own home. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's not that you are sort of willfully ignorant, but, uh, of, of what's going on, but just how hard it is to maintain perspective in that area. Well, yes, it is. I mean, it is. And you don't really know what you want out of that diagnosis, right? Do you want them to have it or do you not want them to have it? But the point is it really doesn't matter if he has it or not. I, I know now, especially with this transition being in middle school, I can't deny it. Like I can't pretend that this isn't happening because it is. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel in some ways though, I'm grateful because I'm able to talk with him in a way that I don't even think my husband can sometimes talk to him because yeah. of my coaching experience. And so I can diffuse things a lot. Um, I, not better. Cause I think my husband does a really good job. I don't want to make it sound like he doesn't or that if you're not a coach, you can't, I don't, that's not what I mean. Um, I, I just, I'm definitely putting my experience into my conversations. Like I have, I have to think about yeah. how I've been trained, you know, right, and it, right. it just, and it helps me stay calm. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, what, what, uh, what I want to go back to is, you know, basically what has happened is he starts the school year and he seems really happy and he is doing well, in my opinion, like I'm not struggling with him on homework. I'm asking him, do you, do you have homework? Yeah, I have homework. Did you get it done? Yep. I sure did. I got it done. Okay, great. And so we're just kind of going along thinking things are great. People are asking me like, so how's middle school? And I'm like, it's great. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> He's really enjoying it. And then we go to the open house and I get my login information on the online grades to get to check in their grades. And I mean, I, I'm sure if you were to see a picture of me, my jaw was like down on the floor. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. This is not what I expected to see at all. Several missing assignments and a few classes that he, you know, was not passing. And so there was a little bit of panic. And so what I'm going to do first is just kind of talk about what I did with this information and sort of what I've learned um, by, by doing that. Well, uh, and there's a, isn't there a third space, which is how do you, how do you initially react and recover? Well, yes. That's yeah. almost what I'm more interested in first, right? Is how do you, you know, you as, as, as an expert, you know, how do you, how do you deal with that and integrate that shock into being able to effectively and confidently move forward? Or I should say probably maybe confidently is never the word in this kind of a conversation. 
Well, I'll tell you one lesson I learned very quickly was not to react. Like I, at first I reacted and I was like, I was angry. I was mad. I was yeah. like, what's going on? Why, why is this happening? Um, which is not what you probably should do. <laughs> 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 not, not when you have a child who has a temperament that, you know, if he feels criticized, he immediately goes into shutdown mode and, um, you know, gets very defensive. And so that's, you know, word of warning, depending on what your temperament of your child is. um, I would say, don't react right away. You got to kind of, you got to figure out what's going on. And that's what I did is I immediately um, emailed the teachers and I said, we need to, we need to talk. Like we need to figure out what's happening because this isn't acceptable in my house. This is not going to be acceptable. Um, I am not one of those parents that expect straight A's out of my kids. And then I never will be, but I am a parent who expects them to try their hardest. And if they, if I can see that they've tried and they get a C or a B, that's totally fine. I'm happy with that. I know that they gave it their all. Um, what I'm not okay with are the missing assignments, yeah. the lack of um, paying attention and just not caring. That to me is not okay. And so, um, I went and the first teacher I spoke to was his woodshop teacher. He was getting a D in woodshop, Pete. Oh. In woodshop. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, yeah. I mean, isn't that a sign that there's something else going on? Well, this is what's so interesting is that I really like his teachers. His woodshop teacher is fabulous. And what he said is that he was giving the kids some room to um, fidget. I mean, like, I don't know if he knows a lot about ADHD or he just, you know, this is maybe just something he knows about kids in sixth grade, but they need to be able to move around. And and so he was giving these kids freedom to draw and to kind of play with pencils and balls and fidget around a little bit while he was teaching the lesson. Well, for some kids, that's a beautiful solution because that then they're able to focus more on what the teacher's saying. Well, it did the complete opposite for my child. He completely hyper-focused on his drawing because he has this great passion right now to draw. So without this teacher knowing this, he picked something to say, yes, Jaden, you can do this, which you know, completely backfired because then all Jaden focused on was his drawing. And what ended up happening is there was a whole week of um, these warm up assignments that Jaden never did. Oh, he, he just never did them. Yeah. And so he was five assignments behind. And unfortunately, you can't. Um, you can't make that up because it's like in class work. Now the teacher assured me that you know, out of all the weeks that there are in a term, he's he's going to be fine. I mean, this isn't going to this D is not going to stay there forever. Um, but needless to say, he's not drawing in that class anymore either. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. we had to take him away. So what my point is is that we were able to kind of figure out what was going on. So you can't just assume, right? You got to talk to these teachers and you got to find out what's happening and. Um, you know, in that situation, it was a pretty easy fix because we were just like, okay, Jaden, you can't, you can't draw in this class anymore. This just isn't going to work mm. for you. And, and he knew, he understood. Um, the next teacher we talked to, it really came down to focus, not paying attention, being too chatty with friends, just not engaged in the material, not interested. Well, again, here's another ADHD trait, right? If you're not interested in the subject, then you're not going to be engaged Verse, then so it's going to be a lot easier to be distracted by friends and right, right. whatever else is going on. And so one of the things that we did for that class is we moved him from the back of the class, because that's the worst place for him to be, um, to the very front of the class. Like right. he is right smack in the front of the class with his teacher. And that's exactly where he needs to be. Which is probably very painful for him. And that's why he naturally <laughs> moves to the back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, And so, you know, again, and then having that conversation with them about what's expected. And so a couple weeks go by and he's getting caught up with the missing assignments. He seems to be getting, you know, the, the processes down of, of what to do, where to turn them in, things like that. Um, but he's still struggling with a couple of grades. And so here we are again now, second conversations with teachers, conferences, 
are coming up, um, you know, and just trying to figure out again what what's happening. And so there is no like happy ending to the story. Like I'm in the process of this right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure what the fix is and I don't I don't know. And so um what all I can do with our listeners is share with them, you know, what what I've experienced and know the things that I've learned is that that we definitely need to be very clear of what the processes are um, of each of these classes of how homework is turned in, what the uh, rules are around late homework or late assignments and things like that. Because something that I found is when I would try to ask my son what these processes were, he just couldn't communicate with me what they were. And I don't know if it was because he didn't understand them himself or it just got really confusing. And then as soon as it got confusing, you know, his frustration level got up. And and so I've just kind of taken it upon myself to meet with the teachers, figure out what the processes are. Don't ask my son. I just need to know myself. And then I can follow up with him. Yeah. Um, on what's happening and he doesn't have to explain it to me. Um, the other thing that I thought was really helpful that might help other people is that when you are meeting with the teachers, have your son or your, your daughter with you, have the child with you in the meeting. Um, I saw a completely different side of, of him when we met with his teacher. He was calm. He was listening. He responded to her in a very mature way. Um, I could tell he was kind of nervous, but that was okay. I think it's good for them to feel that, you know, a little bit. Um, But it was really helpful. And I think it was helpful for him to see that we were communicating with the teacher. We knew what was going on. Um, So, you know, just with that, I think it's a great idea if you can have them um, a part, a part of that. The other thing is my son is pretty organized uh, in his room, like, you know, he's, he, I've taught him kind of those rules that we've talked about for the last four years on this podcast, you know, everything for everything, there's a place and his room is pretty organized, but this year he had this binder that he's never had before. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had to kind of walk through with him. I, I, I basically what my point is here is just don't take for granted that they know how to organize their binder. Don't assume they know. Um, He made a comment to the teacher that he goes through it every two weeks. She's like, you know what, Jaden, I think you should go through it daily. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's news. Yeah. Yeah. And so really just kind of teaching them why they have this binder and what it means to have these tabs and what do you do with your homework and how, because these systems are already in place in a lot of these schools, right? I mean, they they already kind of have this figured out. So we just have to get Jaden to to figure it out. And so, you know, I think that's a a really important point and a sign that, that, you know, schools know uh, and, and that you are not alone, right? I mean, my daughter is dealing with this right now. First, there was the major transition of the fact that she doesn't just have one teacher anymore. Uh, right. You know, that was our, you know, we we're a year ahead of, of Jaden in that area. And so she, that was a big transition last year is figuring out, you know, there's lockers and, you know, multiple books and it's a whole different world. But then this uh, keeping work organized is enormously challenging. Okay. And so for, for the school, school wide, these teachers have, have come together and they've, they've assigned by these uh, planners, daily planners to, to every student. And in each class, there is uh, there's time at the end of each class for the students to write down the assignments and the teachers go through and they write, they watch them write down every word that was on the board to build mm-hmm. and instill this habit. And then they require the parents to sign the binder each day, right? Or the, mm-hmm. the planner each day to say, oh, yes, I've seen this, even if the homework doesn't get done even if it's a at least we know that the student has made that effort to to uh to write down what is due in the planner and that the parent has seen it right and and that is so much of the battle right is just keeping all the work visible yes because it's so easy for them to to just shovel it and put it at the bottom of the backpack and and um, pretend it never happened when it gets really hard my my son has that planner and he lost it. Yeah. <laughs> and so when we had that meeting with one of the teachers, the teacher brings it up or brings it out and she's like, "Have you been missing this?" "Oh, yeah." yeah. Um 
And so, did you, you know, so did you know it was something that you needed to be looking at or? Well, it's one of those things that they're pretty inconsistent at my school. It's like, yeah, you're supposed to be looking at it. You're supposed to sign it, but you, they don't check it. And I haven't been very consistent. I mean, yeah. it, again, it's like a learning experience for me too, to, to realize how important this planner is, is that I do need to check it. I can't just assume that, that, you know, it, it's working. And the thing is, is that, that, that my son in particular could put the assignment in the plan planner, but that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't yeah. mean it's going to get done. It just means that he took something from the board and wrote it down on it. I mean, I don't know if it like, you know, if it registered with him or not. And so yeah. that that's where I need to follow up and just make sure. Well, I can, um, I can certainly echo that, that, that is a learning, uh, you know, it has been a year long learning process and new habit for me, knowing that I have an assignment every right. day, right? Yeah, my assignment yeah. is to, is to make sure that that doesn't get lost. I mean, that's my responsibility as much as it is hers. Right. Uh, yeah. And that's really hard. It is. And I think it's one of those things that, gosh, well, wouldn't it just be nice to be able to not worry about it? But I think, again, you go back to when your children have these issues or these challenges, that's just not an option. Yeah. You can't, you can't not worry about it. it right. you, you have to help them because they're just, they can't figure it out quite yet. You know, maybe in high school it'll be different. I, I I know in college it can be because I coach college uh, students, and yeah. I, I know it, it, it. All of these skills can be mastered at some point. Sure. Um, but, but, the, but like the building age, a wall. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you, if you're building a brick wall and you miss four bricks at the bottom, you know, it's, it's yes. easy to kind of let that go until one day it's no longer structurally sound. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Well, and one thing, um, you know, sort of on a, on a party note that I have been working really hard to, to focus on. And this came out of, um, a, a coaching call I had with my mentor coach was focusing on, um, his strengths. And, you know, it's so easy to get, go straight to what's wrong and what needs to be fixed. And so I've been really making an effort, um, in the last couple of weeks to, you know, point out that he, you know, he really cares about this. He doesn't have the attitude of, I don't care. He he has the attitude that he cares. And so pointing out that, you know, I really appreciate that he is putting the work into this and that he's trying and, and, uh, you know, looking at those things that your kids are doing that are, that are really strong and being able to p- pinpoint those. And when they do get their assignments on time, praising them and, you know, really working off of, of what he's doing well, instead of just everything that they're doing, you know, wrong. And, yeah. and um, that takes a very, conscious effort into doing. I mean, you you have to consciously make that effort, but I can see it light up in his face. Um, One of the things, again, kudos to the teacher that we met because the very first thing she said before she ever even said anything about the planner that he was missing or anything was that, you know, you, um, you know, this material, you, you understand this material, even a little bit above that class average and his, his face just lit up Mm -hmm. as soon as she was saying, you know, these good positive things, you could see the shift that, you know, defenses and stuff were going down. Because how easy is it for him to just take all of that nervous energy and channel it toward resentment? Yes. Yes. Well, and giving them the confidence that, you know what, I know this is hard and it, it, it really does suck that your mom is on you every single day. Yeah. <laughs> and I told him that I said, you're going to be annoyed by me. And I understand that. But until I see the changes in the grades and I know that you really got this, it's something I have to do. And he totally understood. I mean, Good. he just kind of shook his head. Yes. Like he got it. He Good. Knew. He knew. So anyway, there you go. Well, Um, I, that's, you know, I, I think if anything, it's just, uh, you know, a sign that we, that we are not alone. And even, even in your position, knowing everything, you know, and the work that you do every day, um, you know, you are also faced with challenges. I think that's, that's, it's difficult and uh, to, to get through to the other side of this when you're constantly learning in an area that's so close to your heart. Mm Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely. Next week, I'm going to share um, kind of in the same theme here of these transitions, but of some things I've, I've learned with dealing with conflict um, that comes up when you're dealing with these kinds of issues, because it does come up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, we will uh, we'll look forward to that then uh, next week. A little bit of it to be continued. 
Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Nikki. And thank you, everybody, for listening. If you want to find out more about the show, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can subscribe for free. Join us in all of the appropriate social channels, Take Control ADHD, pretty much everywhere. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Plus. We're, we're out there. Uh, search for the show and find us uh, and subscribe for free on iTunes. It is the easiest way, and, and it really helps us when you when you subscribe to the show through iTunes and leave us a kind review and, and, and a nice nice set of five stars. It helps others discover the show. And, and uh, so if you've made a connection with the show, we sure appreciate you sharing it that way. Uh, thanks, everybody. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. <laughs> <laughs>